During 23 years of delivering the message of Islam through his talks and his action or sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad emphasized the notion of values and principle of Islam. And these extraordinary values are the subject of the present study and combined with transformational leadership values identified by business scholars who define the necessary traits for leaders to be successful. You are watching special editions of Capital Update in commemorations of the Prophet Muhammad's birthday. And this is the In the Footsteps of Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad was born in Arabia in the year 571 Common Era. He fulfilled his mission of preaching the religion of Islam from the age of 40 until he departed from this world at the age of 63. During this short period of 23 years of his prophethood, he changed the complete Arabian peninsula from paganism and idolatry to the worship of one god, from tribal quarrels and wars to national solidarity and cohesion, from drunkenness and wickedness to sobriety and piety, from lawlessness and anarchy to disciplined living, from utter bankruptcy to the highest standards of moral excellence. On this Capital Update special on Mount Rasul, we take in on the public of how much they know about Prophet Muhammad as a successful businessman of all time. Oh, Nabi Muhammad sebagai seorang ahli perniagaan ini, uh, dia bermula dulu eh, sebelum uh, masa itu, eh, sebelum dia kahwin lagi, eh, saya ingat saya lah kalau sejarah dia. Sebagai seorang usahawan lah, kita panggil usahawan. Eh, pasal ahli perniagaan dia se, uh, kecil sikit, usahawan ni dia lebih besar daripada term dia tu. Uh, kalau uh, saya ingat saya uh, Nabi Muhammad ni dia dalam bisnes ni uh, dia tidak uh, tidak meletakkan keuntungan perniagaan tu sebagai matlamat utama dia berniaga lah. Di samping uh, untuk uh, untung dia juga uh, mengambil kira faktor-faktor lain lah untuk membantu uh, orang ramai dan juga uh, orang-orang dan yang di dalam kesusahan lah. Uh, itu saja lah saya ingat saya ni banyak lagi tapi uh, Yang banyaknya orang cakap bila Nabi Muhammad ni bila dia berniaga tu faktor keuntungan bukan bukanlah matlamat utama dia berniaga. Yang seperti saya tahu Nabi Rasulullah memang seorang yang yang apa yang amanah datang dalam perniagaannya kerana dia dapat membezakan mana yang tamar tamar yang basah dan tamar yang kering dia, dia diasingkan. Tapi pada waktu itu orang kata dia punya apa, resam orang-orang uh, jahiliah dia akan mencampurkan antara tamar yang basah dan tamar yang kering maka dia menjualkan orang tidak perasan sama ada tamar itu ada sebenarnya yang kering atau tidak Rasulullah SAW, Rasulullah SAW dia membezakan antara tamar keduanya itu dan memberi itu bahawa kepahaman kepada orang Arab bahawa sesuatu barang yang hendak dijual itu hendaklah satu benda-benda yang betul-betul kalau kata-kata ini basah adalah basah kalau yang ada kering-kering maksud kejujuran itu menyebabkan ramai menarik ramai orang untuk memberi kepada dia lah. Uh, dia memang jujur lah. So melalui kejujuran itulah orang ada kepercayaan pada dia dan his business is going well because of that lah. Okay. Nabi Muhammad SAW uh, Okay, let's say dari segi dia punya pricing uh, dia hanya go on 10% you know, he says uh, that, that, that's the thing I really ingat lah yeah, dia Dia kalau katalah kita nak buat uh, the profit, make sure yang clean tu is only 10%. So kita jujur lah dari segi kejujuran and and uh, apa orang kata dia tak dia tak exorbitant lah eh, dia punya uh, percentage of the profit tu. Itu yang I paling ingat lah dari segi buat business kan. Eh. Uh, dia seorang yang jujur kan. Memang Nabi Muhammad kita punya ikon lah kira kan. And then... Uh, uh, kita sebab seorang Muslim uh, kita kena ambil uh, apa ni tujuh aja dia tu kita patut praktis lah dalam kita punya business lah. Evidently, the word on the streets are vague about the knowledge of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a successful businessman, but many to grasp the idea about it nonetheless. Staying honest and truthful is the way to go. This imminent figure in Islam did not only preach to the choir, 
but live it in everyday life that others can see the beauty of Islam itself. Who is Prophet Muhammad and why did Hart list him as one of the influential person in history of humankind? Dr. Magdar Ismail Abdel Muhsin from the National Center for Education in Islamic Finance or in SIF. Uh, Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger to be sent uh, to for all mankind in this world, uh, for the success in this world and for also the success in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. So uh, Prophet, uh, Prophet Muhammad he has been uh, born uh, in the year 571. Uh, when he was born, um, he didn't see his father. His father passed away. And then uh, uh, later, uh, he has been raised by, after his mother also passed away when he was six years old, he has been raised by his uh, uh, grandfather. Uh, and then uh, later, uh, when his grandfather passed away, then he has been raised by his uncle uh, Abu, uh, Abu Talib. Maulda Rasul or Maulda Nabi is the observance of the birthday of the Prophet, which occurs in Rabiul Awal the third month in the Islamic calendar. The basic earliest account for the observance of Maulid can be found in 8th century Mecca, when the house in which Prophet Muhammad was born was transformed into a place of prayer by al Kazuran. Okay, uh, the Prophet وسلم, he faces many, many problems, starting, you know, from his closest relative, okay, uh, like Abu Lahab, you know. Um, and then he faces also a problem in spreading the knowledge in, in uh, Mecca, uh, where he has been born, you know. He is the son of Mecca, but still, you know, because of the people, they uh, rejected Islam, his people, you know, rejected Islam. So he has been forced to migrate from uh, Mecca to Medina. Mm -hmm. uh, in Medina, he has been welcomed, you know, uh, with uh, this new message and people start supporting him. But uh, before, be, 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 before he migrated, as we mentioned, he suffered uh, many types of, not only him, he and his companion, mm -hmm. uh, many types of uh, uh, harm which has been against uh, him mm -hmm. uh, for spreading uh, the knowledge of uh, Islam. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the people during that time, they believe that they have to follow the footsteps of their parents or their grandparents. They refuse for a new message to come to change their whole life. They repel to changing uh, their situation, you know. So this is the problem whereby he faces. So uh, this is a very great challenge for him, you know. That's why... Um, uh, he has to change the whole society, okay, uh, within 23 years. To change, you know, a situation is very, very difficult. But he usually said we have to be patient, we have to be calm, we have to spread the knowledge according to the will of the Creator. We have, as the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to the Prophet, in spreading your knowledge, you don't have to be harsh. You have to bear mercy. You have to spread it in a way that uh, people will accept it slowly. Mm -hmm. So this is the most important thing, you know, in spreading the knowledge. And make sure that you have to be very, very uh, patient because it is going to take uh, longer uh, time. The majority of business people at the present time, they can learn from uh, the success of the Prophet wasallam as a businessman. Mm -hmm. First, uh, he started. Uh, he started uh, um, a business. He started business, or he started to know what about what is business. Uh, since he was nine years old, he used to follow uh, his uncle Abu Talib, um, uh, traveling from country to country. You know, uh, from for example, traveling to Syria, traveling to Yemen, uh, Bahrain. Uh, some scholars they mentioned that they also traveled to uh, Ethiopia and uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. So, so from, from the time when he was nine years old, so he knew the market. 
okay he starts dealing with the people although during that time he was not traded but he just observe, observe you know how people deal with each other how people how successful uh, traders they can be how people they appreciate an honest uh, trader so all these from a young age uh, while he's accompanying his uh, uh, his uncle mm -hmm. he learn all these uh, things and uh, when he reached the age of the 20s um, uh, of course, before this, he started uh, also uh, in the market as a trader. Mm -hmm. And then his reputation, you know, all people, they know him uh, as uh, an honest and as a trust, uh, trustful person. And it has been uh, well known that he is al-Sadiq al-Amin. Uh, because of his honesty in, in, in trading, his honesty in uh, the business, so when I say the Khadija radiallaha, uh, she she is a wealthy uh, businesswoman. When she knew about this, uh, so she asked uh, for a an honest person to trade with her uh, wealth because she's a very wealthy lady. Mm -hmm. So uh, when she asked the Prophet Sallam to become the mudarib, you know, so she entered with him in a mudaraba uh, sailing trade. So she gave her wealth to him and she asked him uh, to, 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 to trade with this uh, money. Uh, uh, buying some goods, so he started buying some goods from, from Makkah, mm -hmm. selling it to Syria, buying some goods from Syria, selling it to Yemen, and buying some goods from Yemen and selling it to Mecca. Um, what gives him the success of these things? Because when, during when he was young, he, as I told you, he used to, to 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 know what is the market and what is the needs of each country. So he immediately uh, knows what is the needs for the Syrian from Mecca. What are the goods that the Syrian people they will buy from Mecca? Mm -hmm. And the same thing. What are the goods that they are going? Uh, he is going to buy from Syria to sell it to Yemen. And so forth, he knows, you know, what are the needs within those countries. So uh, then when he bring back, you know, the Prophet, uh, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu she found that uh, the, the Prophet is not only multiplied, but it is triple. Uh, why? Because he is honest with all these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he, he doesn't cheat, uh, he knows, you know, that he is having a very good quality of product and uh, all the good ethics. He's practicing all the good ethics with the people. Um, and that's why, you know, uh, of course we know that uh, she asked uh, to marry uh, the Prophet wasallam because of his honesty. Uh, despite that uh, other wealthy people, you know, they proposed to marry her, but she refused because of uh, his honesty of that uh, uh, good businessman who managed to bring, you know, um, uh, profit and that type of profit, which is more ethical profit uh, to have. Having said that, um, how was Prophet Muhammad address riba um, that time? Uh, actually, Japanese? yeah, during the time before before the abolition of riba, before the prohibition of riba, we know that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He want to prohibit anything, okay. It will come in stages. So during that time, even during the first years of, of Islam, riba was not prohibited. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even uh, Uhud uh, battle has been financed through riba. So during that time, there was no problem. Even the companion they used to lend uh, through riba. Mm -hmm. Okay, but once the final prohibition, it comes into four stages. Once the final prohibition came, abolishing total prohibition of riba. Mm -hmm. Uh, immediately the companion came to the Prophet ﷺ. they said, okay, now we are lending people through riba, what shall we do? So uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned that, lakum ru'us amwalikum, this means you only get the capital of your money. But whatever profit above this capital, it is riba, you don't have to take it. So immediately the companion, they abide by this. Uh, rule and immediately they uh, they get only the capital, they lend the capital only, and they didn't get uh, riba. Zakat, that which purifies, is the giving of a fixed portion of one's wealth as a tax. 
generally to the administrations of government and is one of the five pillars of Islam. The Caliph Abu Bakr, believed by Sunni Muslim to be Muhammad's successor, was the first to institute a statutory zakat system. <laughs> Uh, so this means what? This means also zakat, it is also an alternative uh, institution to riba. Because uh, zakat is uh, financing eight category of people. Mm -hmm. Who are these eight category of people? Among those eight category of people, they are the poor, the needy, uh, those who are working in the administration of zakat, uh, the barimu, who are the debtors, Fi uh, okay, uh, in the in, in in those who travel, you know, and then uh, those who convert newly to Islam. So these eight category of people, they are the most needy people of money. So if zakat it is going to be given to them, without they themselves be forced to go and ask for 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 loan with riba. Okay, so it will close the door for these eight category of people. Okay, so this means also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciate or encourage Muslim uh, to, give sada, uh, to give this type of zakat because it is going to close eight doors. That's why he said uh, in the Quran, uh, in terms of what? Even their wealth, it is going to increase in this world, not in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. In terms of their wealth, if you are going to give this zakat, your wealth in this world is going to increase because you are helping to close this door of uh, riba for these eight category of people who usually uh, are in great need to borrow with riba. This is the second institution. Uh, so the third institution is the institution of sadaqa. Mm -hmm. Also as came in Surah uh, Al-Baqarah, uh, sadaqa is an alternative uh, institution of uh, riba. Usually people, they, they, they believe that, they think that uh, this sadaqa, it is uh, the zakat. No, sadaqa, this is where, you know, um, this, uh, it is given not to the poor people or not to the needy people, but to even to rich people or middle class people, whereby they have sudden financial crisis, mm -hmm. okay? So these people, uh, the government, they don't know about them because for the poor and needy, government should know them. But for this category of people, no, not many people, they knew them. You, you can knew this type of people within your environment. Either they are your neighbor or they are from your relative, okay, where you hear that sudden problem, they got sudden financial crisis. In this case, this type of sadaqa, it has to be given to them where the right hand gives, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand gives, okay? So this is the, the type of hidden sadaqa. Also, this one, it will close the door for those who are in harmful situation or financial crisis. Instead of going and borrowing through riba to settle their problem, they find help from the people. Okay? Not only this type of charity, but we have also takaful mm -hmm. as a charity and we have also waqf as a charity. But the beauty of this work, it is not going to give like charity, but it is going to open the door for many jobs. Because uh, through the institution of work, you are going to establish many institutions. These many institutions, it is going to open many channels for jobs in terms of schools, as teachers, or to those who build the school, you know, as workers. Many, many jobs is going to be uh, open through this type of uh, institution, which is the institution of Zakat, for example, also in terms of building hospitals, mm -hmm. is going to open the door for the workers, starting from the beginning for the building of the hospital, for the doctors, for the nursing staff. So this institution also, it is going to open the door for uh, many people who seek, you know, job which can be provided by the people. That's why also uh, they call, uh, the Quran men uh, mentioned, you know, sadaqa uh, as an alternative to riba because usually uh, people, when they go for riba, mm -hmm. they, uh, sorry, when they go for uh, borrowing, even at the expense of get, uh, paying the riba, 
they, they will be forced to do this because they want to get jobs. But when, uh, uh, when, you know, in, in, uh, when, they, uh, when all these things, you know, uh, through sadaqa, through uh, waqf uh, is there, so people, they, they will, they, 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 uh, supply of work, okay, is going to be more than the demand of work. So people, they are not going to be forced to go and get uh, uh, to borrow from, from, uh, from the banks, you know, and the, uh, the conventional bank and their interest and all these things. Yeah.